Welcome to the Top Business Leaders Podcast. You'll learn how successful people just like you have grown their businesses, expanded their influence, and made money by writing a book. On each episode, you'll learn the inside secrets to help you create a book that can serve as a powerful marketing tool to skyrocket your business. I'm your host, Dan Janelle. I help thought leaders, business executives, and entrepreneurs write their books. To find out more and to download our show notes, go to topbusinessleaders.com. Our guest today is Lynn Greenhouse. Welcome, Lynn. Thank you for having me, Dan. Uh, Lynn, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about your journey and about who you are? Well, I started off in radio and television broadcast news. I absolutely loved my career. Uh, But then we moved to the States, and I wasn't able to work in the States. I came from uh, Canada, actually, and so I went to law school. (laughs) Uh, And then my path took me onto an online business space where I saw that entrepreneurs were not covering their assets online. And so I saw this opportunity to create a legal uh, services for online entrepreneurs. That led to me writing a book, and here we are today. Fantastic. I know you've written two books, one on coaching, which we'll definitely talk about, and another one on dieting. Now, a lot of my clients come to me and they say, gee, there are so many books about my field, whether it be leadership or management or careers or getting a job or anything you can imagine. I can't imagine any field that has more books written in it than dieting. Why did you decide to write a book about dieting? Hmm, That is such a good question. I felt that this book had not been written. And it was really important for me to write this book. First of all, it's me and no one else has my voice. And it definitely has a tone and a bit of an attitude to it. It's called The Dignity Diet. So it is really more about how do you take care of your body and your mind while everyone else in society is telling you how you're supposed to look and how you're supposed to be in your body? So it was really important for me to get out a message to women that was different uh, from everything else they'd been hearing about, how they were supposed to go on a diet. And then on the flip side, we now have anti-diet culture saying, don't go on a diet, don't go on a diet, Um, diets don't work. And I'm like, hang on a second. Diets do work if you're willing to work the diet. <laughs> so that's what I, I, this book is about taking personal responsibility for your mental and physical health and your body and being respectful to your body and going on a diet if you want to on your terms. So you really had a different philosophy that you thought would make your book different and your, your personal story made it different as well. Absolutely. I think that my philosophy is um, carries over from a book about dieting to a book on entrepreneurship. <laughs> uh, as crazy as that may sound, the philosophy is still there. Okay, so sort of your, what you're saying is that when everyone else is zigging, you're zagging. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, now you wrote a book for life coaches. Why did you decide to do that? Well, when I went into the online space as an attorney, noticing that there was this big black hole where everyone was afraid to, um, you know, of the legal part of it. First of all, it's not sexy. It's kind of boring and it can be really complicated. And so I saw an opportunity where people didn't want to hire lawyers or they weren't ready to hire a lawyer. They didn't want to spend money on a lawyer. I thought, well, I can create a toolkit and I and I call it a DIY legal toolkit that allows people to do a lot of the legal stuff themselves because there is a lot you can do by yourself with a little guidance you can do this stuff now I wouldn't say go out and trademark yourself so in you know in the book I do say you know this is one area where you probably would want to hire a lawyer but for a lot of this stuff you can absolutely do it yourself and so I thought that would um, that's what made this book a little different it's for coaches it's about entrepreneurship it's how to set up your business online but the twist and what I bring to the table is that legal aspect like hey don't forget about this stuff because this is where you could get into legal hot water and we don't need you to do that and just these few simple steps could keep that from happening great now, I noticed that you have 47 steps in your book. And 46, Dan, 46. 46. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I stand corrected. Now, uh, between you and me, I'm sure there are more than 46 steps, uh, but you stuck to it. I'm curious why you chose 46 instead of 101 
and how well, you, yeah. Yeah, yeah I how, mean, yeah, I think that's such a good question because um, there there could have easily been 47, 48, 49. But um, I worked with a coach on this book, whereas I didn't with the first book. And that made all the difference because he was able to kind of hold me accountable to the outline that we created and the purpose of the book. And so, yes, I could have had 146 steps, I, I would imagine, but I needed to stay true to the reader of this book. And that was someone who was just starting their business um, and who um, in surveys that I did had told me like, Lynn, just tell us what we need to do to get started. Give us the step-by-step -step, um, process so that we could just go out and do it and not throw the whole book at us. So that's what I did. I, I thought, all right, where do you need to start? And I started at the very beginning, like this is step one, and then this is step two. Um, and I stopped at 46. <laughs> <laughs> well, I admire you for doing that because I have clients who we start with an outline and they are experts. They know their topic inside and out. And they want to share so much. And I have to tell yep. them that people don't want to read the entire encyclopedia about their topic. They just want to know the answers to a few basic questions or a few basic problems that they have. So they get to know, like, and trust you. So they want to hire you. Right, right. But, you know, and so to get over that hurdle, Dan, like people were saying to me, 46 steps. Are you kidding? That's going to turn people off. So what I did was I said, hey. I know it sounds like a lot of steps, but I am keeping in my integrity. I'm not going to tell you that there are 10 easy steps to starting an online business because there's no such thing. There are 46 to get started, and I walk you through step by step in a way that is really doable. So it was kind of part of my thing to say, yeah, 46 steps, and don't believe anyone who tells you there are less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wrote a book called Write Your Book in a Flash, so we could always argue about what a flash means, but when I see people write books saying, write your book in a weekend, an entire book in a weekend, yeah. I don't yeah. think so. Uh, <laughs> or it's not going to be exactly. too much of a book. Um, right. But it all depends on what the purpose of the book is, I, I guess you could say. Now, you brought up an interesting point. You said you worked with a coach. Why did you feel you needed a coach, and what did they add to the process? So the very first time I did it on my own and I, and I have <laughs> all, so many of my own clients will say, oh, I can do this myself. And hence the legal thing, right? I want to do it myself. I want to do it myself. Well, I think you get to a point in your business as your business is growing when you realize doing everything yourself is um, it, it adds to stress. It takes the fun out of it. And so the first book, while it was trial and error and it was a, an interesting process, I did not want to do it alone again. I wanted to get my book out there in a way that would be seen and noticed on Amazon and in my coaching circles. And so I hired someone who could really get me to focus on what this book was going to be about, who it was for, and then to make sure that I wrote that book, because otherwise I would have just kept writing and writing and the book might have been so much longer. But as it turns out, it turned into the 46 steps, but it also is divided into two distinct parts. The first half of the book is all about the mindset that you need to be an entrepreneur that can create a profitable business. Because so often, I'm sure you hear this, Dan, like people start off all excited and then they're like, oh my gosh, there's more work than I imagined. And so I kind of let them know up front, like, hey, this is going to take your attention and commitment and you're going to have to take responsibility for the fact that you are building a business. So I'm not going to tell you it's easy, but you don't need to tell yourself that this is too hard all the time or that will just wear you down and you'll never complete the project. <laughs> so that's the first half of the book. And then the second half of the book, once I've got your mind on straight, uh, is about, okay, let's get to work and let's go through the steps. Okay. So getting back to the idea of having a coach, it sounds like they help you with some marketing with Amazon. And it also, do they help you revise, rewrite, um, you know, what do they do, what do they not do? So uh, they, first of all, in working with um, a coach like yourself or anyone, I, they can, that coach can point you to in all the right directions. Like 
if my coach couldn't help me in a certain area, he would point me to like, here's the best person to do the cover for your book. Here's the best person to do the interior of your book. So there was some really strong guidance that I didn't have the first time. And I absolutely love the cover of my second book. And I, uh, I just, I love the whole, the whole thing. And, but what really, really helped me um, in this, this time around was that my coach got me ranked on Amazon um, in four or five different categories. And I stayed there for a long time. And even a year later, even two years later, I was like still in the top five, top 10 um, in those categories. So I thought that was, um, was really instrumental in getting my book seen and in getting me reviews and just getting attention and eyeballs on my book. It was great. Cool. In the green room, you told me that the, your coach also helped you position yourself so the book became a better marketing tool. Can you tell us about that? Well, he, he gave me many ideas on what I could do with my book so that it wasn't like, okay, you write the book and then you put it out there and you just leave it, or like leaving it in a drawer. It was like, how can I use my book? How can I take pieces of my book? and to market it. So for example, we've talked about that there are 46 steps in this book. Well, what I did is I created a 46 step checklist all on one or two pages maybe that you could print out. Um, so that was my opt-in for quite some time and it's still actually on my website where you can get 46 steps. And so it's just the, che the checklist with maybe a couple of points, um, what to do and then hopefully uh, in reading that checklist, someone will then go and buy the book or go back to the book and, and find out what they, for a more in-depth explanation. But I thought that was just such a good idea to create that free checklist to promote the book because it, it did get me a lot of um, signups. Uh, it grew my list and it, I think, led to more sales of my book. I'm sure it did. It, 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 it showed you to be a person who gives a lot of good information because there was value in the checklist itself. If they did nothing else with you, they got real value. And it helped That's to build right. your yes. credibility as well, but they couldn't do it all themselves. There's always some spot in there where the consultant has to come in and do things, especially in a legal matter. Uh, can you talk about how you decided how much to give and have what to hold back so they need to hire you? So with 46 steps, of course, there wasn't, um, these were not long, like 46 long chapters of how to do it, but what you needed to do and the things that you had to make sure were done or um, included as you went along. So for example, um, one of the steps is you, you need three, uh, you need three legal docs on your website. And then I explain what they are. You need your privacy policy, you need a disclaimer, and you need your terms and conditions. And I explain what those are and why they are so important. But I don't I don't include a privacy policy and a terms and conditions or a disclaimer in there. Or that would have made the book really long. Um, and also because that is something that I do sell on my uh, Cover Your Assets online website. So I have this DIY legal toolkit. So this was like broad awareness to entrepreneurs like, oh, I, I, I would have never thought of that or I had no idea. And so many entrepreneurs have no idea what they need to do. They think, oh, it's the internet and I'm a really small business. Nobody's even going to, you know, know I'm here. And I'm like, on the contrary, all the people out there that can hurt you, they go after all this, the little guy, because the big guys are all <laughs> legaled up and covered and <laughs> they've done all that. But it's the small, it's the smaller businesses that uh, leave themselves so exposed. And so people were saying to me, wow, like I had no idea. Well, that's interesting and scary. Uh, we'll have to download yeah. your checklist and find out some more. That's yes. the first step. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. In addition to using a coach, you also had uh, a number of beta readers help you along the way, and you built a whole team to help you launch your book. Tell us a little bit more about that, please. So at my coach's suggestion, I, uh, before I really got into writing the book and um, you know committing to what I was going to write about, I, I had people that were coaches who were starting their businesses and I sort of created this team and they were really, you know, into it. They really wanted to help me and give me feedback and I gave them access to me that they would not otherwise have had. And I asked them 
pointed questions. Like if you were to find the perfect book to tell you uh, what you needed to know, what would be in that book? Like what would it include? And over and over again, what I kept hearing, the theme was we want it simple, step-by-step. Do this first, then do this, then do this. And I thought, you know, I think we underestimate, um, you know, what we need to do when we're writing. Like we want to, sometimes we get into our, you like, we want to write a book to prove how smart we are mm-hmm. and how much we know. Um, and sometimes we leave the reader behind. And I thought that was so helpful for me to know, like, I just need to write this book for these people who are just starting their businesses Anyone who is an experienced entrepreneur online is not going to read this book and say, whoa, I mean, that person probably knows everything. So if they don't like my book, that's okay. I was writing for this specific uh, audience. And that really helped me because they told me exactly what needed to be in that book. (laughs) That's great feedback. When, uh, When the book came out, what did they do to help you promote the book? So uh, interestingly, they were, you know, when the book came out, they were posting online, they shared the links, they talked about um, the fact that they had just left a review, they would post a, uh, a snippet of the review that they left. So I ended up, I was so surprised at all the reviews that I got. I was so surprised at how well we did on the first day. Like, we ranked number one, and I, I probably said this, but I was so proud. <laughs> I was so proud of myself, but I was really, really thankful that I had that coach who really knew what he was doing. He knew how to position me on Amazon to be seen. And that was um, invaluable to me. But but my readers, they were lovely. And so we, we had created quite a bond as I was writing this book. And so they were just only too happy to say, we're on the team and here's the book. And they, they shared it. It was great. So that that is so important in launching a book to have loyal followers who yeah. Do things for you, even without you asking. That That's so right. cool. Congratulations. Uh, tell me more about what you do in terms of using the book as a marketing tool. So one of the things, um, as a marketing tool, I will use the book. I will sometimes give the books away to my clients. So um, I often do that, actually, because it gives them a foundation of the work that we're about to do together. Uh, so th- it, it's a great tool for that. But I've given away free chapters of the book. I've got the checklist. I've got blueprints. So there are different ways that I have been able to take parts of the book and um, repurpose it into a free offer or, um, you know, giving it away to other coaches maybe who might be able to promote it, going on podcasts like this and talking about various aspects. Like we could talk about how to write a book, but I can also talk about the legal aspect of starting your online business. I can also talk about, you know, just the just the mindset part of it. So having that kind of background in the book, I can take pieces out from the book and then uh, approach podcast uh, hosts and say, hey, I think this topic would be great for your audience. I've written a book, so that gives me some credibility. And um, it's a really good way to get in the door. Fantastic. Lynn, you've given us so much great information. Tell us a little bit more about who your ideal client is and how they can get in touch with you. So my ideal clients either are working on their bodies or their businesses or both. Both are my favorite, um, (laughs) working on both, because you probably know, Dan, when you get (laughs) all um, engulfed in writing a book, or in your business, you forget about yourself and your body and taking care of yourself. And one of the things I learned is that is the worst thing that we can do because it's, it takes a whole lot longer to catch up. And, and our businesses, I think, profit um, the most when we take care of ourselves. So I coach women on how to start their businesses. Um, but the thing that is common in the coaching that I do is is your mind. Everything starts from the inside. So when you're going on a diet or you're starting a business, the same thing applies. You're either all in and you're going to take responsibility and you're going to be committed to what you're doing or you're not. And the end result will be a reflection of whether you were all in or not. And your website is? 
my website is lynnelioff.com or that's hard to spell, which it is, um, gutsygloriousliving.com. And my legal website is coveryourassetsonline.com. Great. Thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thanks for listening to Top Business Leaders, the only podcast that shows you exactly how people just like you have built their businesses by writing a book. If you'd like to write your book but don't know where to start, you can find great information at writeyourbookinaflash.com. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back next week with another insightful interview to help you become a top business leader.